Chef Jason is a simple chef. I take my experiences and I put it in my food. I grew up around food. When I was a kid, my father and I, uh, we'd go to restaurants and we would eat everything and we'd go to Italian, we'd go to steak houses, we'd go to Spanish restaurants. So I got my influence um, in my happy times as a kid experiencing food with my father and those were some of the happiest times. So I approach food with that same kid-like um, I amness, I call it, uh, where I get to be creative, I get to have fun, play with textures and colors and food. So. I try to travel as much as I can and wherever I go, I find something I like. I'll uh, express it through food or express it through um, love and passion of flavors. Yeah. Out of high school, I played some football and things like that. So once that was done and over with, I was uh, transitioning from like, what am I going to do? So I worked with this gentleman a young uh, as a young guy, as a chef for um, Craig D'Amico, taught me how to taught me the real cooking, how to saute, how to reduce the reduction, why you add this, why is the oil ripple, and it made it um, fun for me, because if I wasn't going to be a chef, I'd be a scientist, I'd be a physicist. So I like the science, I like the, um, the why, the how, how can I make this better, and always pushing. So he taught me at a very young age this, the process of just cooking, not put something in a pan and do this and do that, but like the whole process. So I started becoming, took it really seriously and in about 2003 I had a great opportunity to take over a restaurant in Tampa, Florida called Rattlefish and uh, worked with another chef friend of mine there and huge volume, million, like five million dollars a year in volume and we weren't even expecting that, it was crazy. So it was all this learning experience all in a one and I was like, I'm really good at this. I was really good at conceptual thinking and working with people and talking with different people and getting all to do the same thing we need to do and get to the end result and it could help that I could cook too. So I really said, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make this my career. So in 2003, I was like, this is when I'm gonna go push all the way forward. And since then I've accomplished and traveled and worked with some master chefs along the way and some really cool people. And um, I love what I do. The term chef is loosely used. People think because they, they're a home cook or they run, and there's nothing about it. I don't mean to say anything bad, but um, to be a chef, I think you need to understand a broad spectrum of stuff. And it's a continual learning process. It's not something, well, I was a kitchen manager here, so I'm gonna be a chef, or I was a, um, an assistant kitchen manager here, no. You have to understand flavors. You have to understand techniques and a multitude of different techniques. Um, make, learning how to make something Turkish in the Turkish way or learning how to make something like alkaline noodles and what, what the alkalinity does to a noodle when you're stretching it to break down the gluten and understand that to be a chef. You need to understand like not to be, not just to open a can of tomato paste, but how you actually could make a tomato paste. How do they do that? Where did that come from and where did that originate from? So you can apply those same techniques and that culture and that heritage that got that tomato paste to where it is now. So I think to be a chef, you need to know a lot about a lot or a little bit about a lot. A jack of all trades, a master of none to be a really good chef. Baking, pastries, cooking, different cuisines. Uh, and I apply that to my consulting. So when I do go into a restaurant, you look at all the, the whole thing from the ambiance to the food, to the menu design, to the layout, how it all ties in together. And being able to travel a lot, you be, you, you're able to see um, what works and what doesn't work. And then I can apply that to being a scientist or having a scientist mind. I can apply that to a problem and solve that problem. So I think to be a good chef, you need to be, you need to have some good attributes. You need to have some human skill, some technical skill, and the one that makes you set you apart is a conceptual skill. Taking all that information and conceptually putting it in to solve a problem. So I think that's the difference between a chef and a consultant. I think a, um, a chef scientist in a way, because you have to understand, you have to understand the processes of rigor mortis breaking down meat. Why, how does that, how does rigor mortis, uh, uh, and I don't mean to go off on a tangent, but rigor mortis is a, uh, a key component of breaking down flavor and textures of beef. It's a necessary process of hanging a piece of meat, but a lot of people don't know that. You just go to the store, you buy it. There's no, um, I, that all fascinates me to make me want to learn more. So I consider myself a chef scientist and an artist because I take what the flavors, the techniques, the textures, and then you can express it through all those on a plate and then give it to you in a neat, fun way for a guest to enjoy it. I'm like, oh, mm, did you taste that? Let me dip it in this and let me take it with a shot of this or pairing it with the acidity of the wine to this or doing it with a beer or doing it with a craft cocktail. I think there's so many different ways to bridge those gaps and those flavor profiles, um, being a scientist, an artist, and a chef. The most challenging part of being a chef 
besides making sure everybody shows up on time and does their job, uh, I think getting everybody to believe in the same vision you have um, and keeping them intrigued, keeping your staff motivated and not just coming in, oh, I have to peel potatoes day. My approach to when I, you work for me and, and anyone who's ever worked for me in the past knows that I'm going to try to pass on as much knowledge to you as I can and learn from you. At the same time, I don't care if you're a dishwasher or if you're my chef de cuisine or a sous chef. I want to learn from you and I want you to learn from me. So my challenging job is to keep everybody motivated. We know we have a marathon and our marathon is our goal, but how do I keep everybody going in that and believing that same marathon and that same dream and that same vision is, um, is a challenge as a chef. And then at that same time, keeping your sanity and, and having a family life outside of that. So there, you have to be able to wear many hats, I think, to be a, a successful chef. If you want to be a chef, this is not, this is not for the faint. This is not for, um, I'm going to go be on TV. I'm going to go do anything like that. There's long hours. There's no, you're going to be, hmm. when they teach it in school and they teach a lot of stuff, you're going to learn all that and you're going to think that it's going to be glamorous. You have to love it. You have to go do a 17 hour day and go back the next morning and know you have to open up at 5 a.m. when you just left at 12. And you know you have to do that all over again and put that face on and just do it and not let it wear you down. Um, long hours, long nights, and just know that at the end of the day you made some good food. And I mean, I, I thrive on that. I love that. I couldn't imagine myself doing anything else other than being a chef and being in that industry of, you could never get bored with it. Um, so I think that a chef would have to uh, know that there's a lot of work that goes into it. It's not just going to be easy. And a lot of them, you know, just make sure, go work in a kitchen for, for, for a minute. Go work those long hours and some stuff like that and see if you really want to do it before you want to go to culinary school or you want to dedicate your life to it because it's not for the faint, you know. One ingredient in my kitchen that I must have, it's a secret ingredient. There's a bunch of ingredients. It depends on what I'm cooking. But one ingredient, well, I'm going to have to say it because I grew up with it, adobo. I mean, like adobo goes on everything. Um, sazon completo. Um, I grew up, my, my stepmother is Puerto Rican, so I grew up in a Puerto Rican kind of thing. I'm, an Engli I'm English, my father's American, so at the end of the day, I grew up around a bunch of things. But salsa is a fresh paprika paste. Um, citric acid, you have to have a little bit of that, a little uh, citrus salt. Um, I don't know, there's so many different things in, the, in my kitchen, but I'd have to say, I mean, definitely uh, salsa and adobo. Current trends, that's a good question. Some of the current trends right now in the, in the culinary industry, what I'm seeing, there's a huge trend right now from the way people are eating. You know, you're starting to see it in the big chains between Subway, McDonald's, Chili's, Chipotle, uh, taking all their antibiotics, no hormones, no preservatives, and going back to people being more conscious of what they're eating. They don't want to eat all the preservatives, all those, the things that you can't read on the bisodium carbonate, bisoso phosphate, what, all that crap. Um, nobody wants to eat that. So I think people are being more conscientious of what they're doing. So you're going to see a trend of going back to holistic, uh, organic. That's going to be a big movement. Um, that's with food, pro, no, uh, no hormones, no GMOs. Um, I think that you're going to also see a really huge trend right now is going to start coming as craft cocktails as you're going to take more wind of it. Um, there's a great uh, movie out called Hey Bartender. It starts to explain the movement of what, what, how the, the industry has transpired from the prohibition style to where it's at now and where it's going to go in the future. So you're going to start seeing offshoots of what craft cocktails are, the speakeasies going into ultra lounges that are craft cocktail based or even uh, theme based craft cocktails. So I think it's going to be a huge movement and then the food is going to pair with that. There's so much things that influence and set trends and people don't realize what actually set trends with food and in your inspirations in uh, restaurants is art, you know, what's current in art, what's current in social media, what the fashion industry does because the fashion comes out first. You know, and, and the Canes and all these, the New York, the New York uh, Fashion Week and stuff, they have all the top chefs there. So those guys there are setting the trends based on what the fashion and the colors are and architecture and design. So all those five things pay, play, pay, play big roles in what are going to affect our, our trends for years to come. Simplicity right now is going to go back. You're going to start seeing a lot of kind of art deco meeting uh, timeless because people want that timeless feel. Um, there's gonna be there's gonna be some really cool trends as far as the way people eat. You're gonna start seeing a lot more energy efficient uh, buildings as far as restaurants. You know your huge costs as a restaurant owner are your your gas, your water, your electric, and if you can start saving that cost down, your profit margin can get bigger. So they're gonna be they're gonna start 
taking what they've learned in the homes and the houses, residential, and start putting that really back into the restaurants to help the owners because, you know, there's not a very big profit margin. People have a misconception that you're going to make a lot of money when you do a restaurant because look how busy it is. You're lucky. You're doing 5 to 10% net profit, you know, at the end of the day after you've paid all your bills. So if you can save some money between energy efficiency, you know, uh, sourcing better products locally and working together like that, you're going to start seeing, a, you know, a little bit more profit for restaurant owners. The future for Chef Jason and School Food Restaurant Groups looks bright. Um, we we have ambitious plans. I mean, I, I, at the end of the day, right now we are opening a sandwich shop in Ivanhoe District with the old Alpine uh, Coffee and Bakery Shop. It's going to be called This and That Eats. Uh, hopefully, we'll be scheduled to open by the end of the month. Uh, everything permits and it'll be a global fair uh, sandwiches from banh mi's to traditional cubans to pastrami and then very uh, regional specific um, coffees and sides using flavors and things like that but putting an artistic scientific little twi uh, twist on it um, we have a plans to uh, still open maddie's craft and crew we're still under opening that where that'll be in new york new americana artisan pizzeria everything from snout to tail uh, local organic as much as we can craft beers, craft cocktails, um, that's in the works. And um, hopefully things keep going well. We're, there's a plan to open a uh, craft cocktail lounge in downtown Orlando. That's, everything is like happening right now, but right now what will be open first will be the uh, sandwich shop in the next couple weeks, by the end of the month hopefully. And um, still build a consulting business. We, that's where I, my bread and butter comes from, helping other restaurant tours and restaurant owners, bar owners, cover your cost and, and cost out your menus. A lot of people don't do that. So that's where I'm really good at is helping them bring everything together and tying it into one between training manuals um, and just really reworking School Food Restaurant Group, um, text marketing, all the fun stuff, uh, design, layouts. We do we do the full gamut from curb, from curb to kitchen with School Food Restaurant Group. So that's where our bread and butter is. But now that we're trying to showcase some concepts that we believe in, so it'll be be easier to, to sell what we our vision is and our dreams. You know, it's always proof is in the pudding. 